I don't know why I'm doing this. I don't know how I'm gonna come up with all the money to do this. I know I've got 46 machines and a couple properties that I can burn to the ground to pull this off. I've got at least, at least 25 machines that we can just burn away, dump the money into this and just make baskets and baskets of fields and fields and fields of material or food, sorry, it's material to me in this. I have no idea what I'm doing farming wise. I like, like no idea. I've always killed everything that I've ever tried growing. I brought the ATV today and I've mapped out the whole land, the whole 10 acres. I just did one quick loop around and I know exactly where I'm gonna put everything. I know exactly how I'm gonna get the water from one side to the next. I, I believe this is where the expertise that I've come up with over the years has, uh, has led me to. You know, I learned how to land develop and set up land developments when I was 23. I uh, started a construction development company at 23, started the excavating company at 24 and a half years old. You know, I had my fifth machine by the time I was 26. And I just keep adding and adding and adding and it's all, it all means nothing. It, 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 it's attached to nothing. You know, if I was broke or I was rich, I wouldn't be any happier. But I'll tell you what I'm really happy about. I'm really happy that when I'm on the field the other day, I come back over and I, I was trying to get my kids out of the way. And I come back over and my son and my daughter had created a fire pit and they made a teepee and they put all the small sticks in and they put the rocks around just like I learned in Cub Scouts and all I did is show them a couple times but they wanted to be like daddy. I think in these times with the COVID we need to get back to just being with our families. We need to worry more about the people and the we than the me and I, I believe me has focused too much on me and I think this is a time in my life that I need to start giving back. I've had everything that I could ever dream of. I've had wild and crazy experiences in life. You know, at uh, 21 years old, I was uh, teaching snowboarding in Whistler and me and a buddy went out s uh, drinking pretty hard the night before. We went, uh, teaching snowboarding, as soon as your lessons are done, you go out uh, with the clients. They take you out for dinner if you're doing private lessons. I was doing private lessons out of the village. I always heard about people getting sweet hookups, like going to Europe once or stuff and stuff like that. And then so, me and a buddy were out drinking the night before. He didn't make it to work. I remember specifically throwing up on the way down to the lodge that morning. And I almost didn't get a lesson that day. And then I got a last minute lesson that my buddy didn't show up for. Well, that was a good buddy of mine, uh, Stephen Rankin. And I met his kids when they were, Jess was about three. Ooh, ben was, oh crap, Ben was four or five. And then Jack was six or seven and Tom was, eight, nine, ten, and uh, I taught uh, the three of the boys how to snowboard, and I was invited on all of their Swiss trips, uh, Austria, France, I've gone to Europe now, all expense paid, and jet setting, and living like a king, and seeing what the other side really is, and, and, and going to Olympic uh, uh, places of, of horse training, and you know, sitting in the, the, the president's box at uh, Newcastle United versus Manchester and private jets and helicopters and yachts. And I've, I've seen so many different avenues with so many different ways with my clients, you know. And what it's all made me realize is all of this is just absolutely nothing. We're, we're, we're in a paradigm shift right now. It has to happen. People say, oh, there's no uh, climate change and that there's, it's all a hoax. I call bull crap. I'm on the front lines when it comes to dirt. I see the difference of the growth of stuff. I see the trees dying. I see the land getting more barren. I see the water getting less. I see in, in the winter time, I, I see, you know, snowstorms. I've had a, a, snow, a snow removal company for 15 years and I see for 15 years it gradually getting worse and worse and hotter and hotter. I never used to have to, uh, uh, to even me personally worry about having fire trucks set up. But over the last couple of years, I had to set up one fire truck, now two fire trucks, just to even keep enough moisture in the ground to get basic work done. So why am I doing this? I still don't know. But after I believe I had COVID and everyone that I was with got really sick and my friend, Stephen Rankin, now Stephen Rankin was the, the best man, him and his son were both uh, two of the best men at my wedding, or groomsmen anyways. And uh, they mean the world to me. They, they've become like family to me. We, 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 we work together in life on an even keel. He's a superstar and I'm down here. But when we're together, we're even keel. And when I found out that his wife, Kim, got really sick 
uh, and she was on a ventilator and intubated. And I know he's got access to the best medical uh, money could buy. He's he's one of the largest uh, ex or uh, one of the largest construction co uh, companies in Northwest England, Metnor Group. And um, Kim means a lot to me. She's like my mother. When when I was going through a bad divorce, uh, Kim and the kids said that they would jump on whatever flight next possible to come be at court to support me. And that meant to me more than anything because my babies are everything. And I'd like to be able to give back and I'd like to be able to change the world. And all of the things that have happened to me over the last couple of years. Three years ago in August, I ran into a cougar on the yacht club and I've never been so scared in my life. And I don't normally get scared. Like things like this, taking on this big crazy experience, this doesn't scare me one little bit. Burning my companies to the ground to feed people doesn't even scare me for a second. But that, not being able to see my kids and raise my kids, going through the same thing with COVID. I prayed for nine days that I was gonna make it through the night. That was nine scary nights. It was like, I was like pulling snakes of the most disgusting, and I know this is gonna be sound really bad, but the most disgusting phlegm, like snakes of it up, choking to death, throwing myself on the floor, waking up and not being able to get oxygen into my lungs for 15, 20, 30 seconds. Lying on the ground, choking to death, praying that I was going to get oxygen and throwing myself against the wall. Tears, fear. Now that's real fear. And a lot of people right now, the middle class are going to be hurt the hardest because in my personal belief, they are the economy. It's not the, the guys at the top. It's not me. It's the people down below us. It's the people that should be at the side of us who are going to struggle the most. And what matters to me with this is making sure that those families get through this because we need them to get through. We need that skilled labor. We need those people that are buying those trucks or supporting a solar system or a solar economy. We need clean energy technology. We need the skills of those people to bring around. And so my epiphany while I sat there in my bedroom, now backing up, I broke my clavicle and I had 26 screws and two plates and it was broken in three places. One overlapped the other, the broken piece in the center drove down like a T. I waited three days to get surgery. When I got surgery, six days later, I had a bi, uh, I think it's called bilateral um, double hernia operation. And then I went back to work the same day. But that COVID, so I'm, I, I am tough in some regards. You know, I broke my, my, uh, um, my tailbone and drove two friends to the airport right after I did it. So I know pain and I know stuff that's tough. My ankle, I've got two screws holding my ankle together. Went off a motocross jump, landed sideways, flipped over, broke my ankle, got up, loaded my bike, took my boot off and then loaded my bike. I and mean, I drove myself to the hospital, drove myself home, I loaded my bike, drove myself to the hospital the next day, got surgery, got out of surgery, went down to the emergency room, waited till they went away, and then drove myself home. I know pain. That COVID, I've never had anything like it. I've never been sicker in my life. And so this is if we, we don't start coming together, there won't be a me or a you or a Justin or my kids. You know, because me can't do this alone. I can't do this without Justin. That's a we. We need to come together. And this is my contribution. And this 100 by 100 is the start, as fast as I can build this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna come over to, to this section over here. I'm gonna build the next section I'm gonna build. It's a 100 by 200 foot area. And it's gonna be dedicated just to bees. Pollination as an all-time low. Bees are, ecosystems are falling apart. Frogs ecosystems are falling apart. I see it every day in my job. I've taken down millions of trees and my mission now is to revert everything that I've done. By the time I'm done with this farm, this will be pumping back more oxygen than it ever did previous. But we need to work together for our kids, for their future, for Justin's kids and his future, we need to come together.